In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O heavenly King, comforter, spirit of truth, present everywhere and filling all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and dwell in us, cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O good one. O Lord our God, we thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us. We ask that you would send your spirit upon your, our speakers today, that you would open their mouths and allow them to proclaim the truth of your gospel. For the glory of your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. And uh, um, at this point, I will ask our oratorical chairperson, uh, Kelly Papania, to come up. And uh, we thank her for your work. So thank you so much for taking time to out of your schedule to um, help prepare um, our judges and all the timekeepers and everything else. Um, and I also want to thank uh, our um, seventh and eighth grade Sunday school teachers, Brian and Maria Williams and Rob McClish. This is uh, part of the curriculum for our seventh and eighth grade class. And so we thank you guys for helping to uh, guide our students through this preparation and providing mentorship and, and direction. Okay, Kelly. Okay, good morning everyone, Reverend Father, honorable judges, fellow parishioners and speakers. Welcome to the 2021 St. John Chrysostom Oratorical Festival. In a moment, we will be hearing from our speakers, but I'd like to thank you all for being here and take a moment to thank the students for their dedication to the festival this year. It goes without saying that this past year has been both unprecedented and challenging in many ways. Placing a global pandemic for the first time in our lifetimes created a new platform and virtual way of gathering as a parish. One of the only constants throughout this time has been our faith and I admire our students for their efforts to attend Sunday school via Zoom and working on their speeches over the past several weeks. With that being said, I would like to welcome our first speaker with talk, topic number two. Prayer is called a conversation with God. Discuss the meaning of prayer in your life. Reverend fathers, honorable judges, fellow parishioners and speakers, good morning. Prayer is a very important part of our faith. As such, there are many different prayers for many different times. When prayers are sung in church, they are usually called hymns and are dedicated to a specific feast, saint, or group of saints. Even though prayers have many different uses, some can be used for all, all purposes, like the Jesus prayer which can be used in situations where you don't know a specific prayer for what you're in, and but you still need to pray. Sometimes it's hard to know what to pray for or about. I definitely have been there, and I will probably be there many more times. An example I've not known when, what to pray about is when, I was tr is when I'm trying to sleep to calm down, and I didn't know what to say, and I just repeated the Jesus prayer over. One part of prayer is what you're asking for. Some prayers are about forgiveness for others and yourself, how they wrong someone else or you, or how you wrong somebody else. Prayers of safety are also important if you or a family member is going through something and they need to stay in the eyes of God. Prayer can also be used to praise God. It can be about his mercy or about how glorious he is. Other times, instead of not knowing what, when, Want what to pray about, but instead when to pray. There are common times to pray, such as before and after meals, before waking up, before falling asleep, and after waking up. Praying before meals is important because it thanks, because it's blessing the food you're about to eat, and thanking Him for providing it for you. Praying after meals is thanking is about thanking God for what he, for what He has provided with you and asking Him to keep giving you blessings. Praying before falling asleep is important because it ends your day with prayer and it can help calm you down before sleeping. Prayer after waking up is also important because it starts your 
It starts your day with prayer, and it can also help you get ready for the day. Prayer is not always time-locked to before falling asleep or before meals or anything, but it can be spontaneous and done as it needs to. Things such as, things such as medical procedures or long trips can have prayers attached to them. Knowing where to pray is also important. Most prayer takes place in a church or chapel or holy place, but having a place in your home to pray is also important. Sometimes it can be as simple as just sitting at your desk with, a, with an icon and a prayer book in front of you. Other times it can be just in front of a wall with a couple icons on it and saying what you need to say. Prayer can affect, prayer affects your relationship with God because it brings you closer to Him and Him closer to you. And it doesn't have, you don't have to pray every day because it can be hard to keep that commitment every single day, but it's important to still find time most days to pray. Thank you. Next, we will have speaker number two with topic number three. During the pandemic, people noticed that our natural environment became cleaner. What can this teach us about our care for the natural world? During the recent pandemic, people have noticed that the environment became cleaner. This indicates a correlation between air quality and travel. From these changes, we should learn how to better take care of the environment. An article titled, Does Lockdown Reduce Air Pollution? Evidence from 44 Cities in Northern China stated that the air quality index decreased by 7.8%. There was also a significant decrease in pollutants such as sulfur dioxide, particulate matter, nitrogen dioxide, and carbon monoxide. This matches with a significant decrease in the intracity migration index, which is a number used to represent how much people commute. This, shows the this again indicates the correlation. After that, I used a study titled Indirect Effects of COVID-19 on the Environment. A 2016 report by the World Health Organization stated that 91% of the world population lives in places with poor air quality. According to the same report, air pollution contributes to 8% of the deaths in the world. The Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service found a significant drop in particulate matter levels compared to the past three years. Uh, 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 one satellite showed a decrease uh, of concentrations uh, in nitrogen dioxide, especially in, in the first cities in Europe to quarantine. Uh, a reading in China showed uh, a drop of between 20 and 30 percent in particulate matter levels. Next, I read a PDF called Air Pollution Reduction and Mortality Benefit During the COVID-19 Outbreak in China. 
uh, reduced levels uh, of nitrogen dioxide in particulate matter are, are predicted to have prevented around 12,000 deaths. Uh, if nothing is done, uh, pollution will, will, uh, could, could rise again and harm more people. We should use these recent changes to the air and water quality to learn how we should take care of the environment. Due to a pandemic, I have had to do all of my activities virtually from home, for instance, school and violin lessons. This has decreased the amount of driving my mom and grandmother have done. This has resulted in reduced fuel emissions from their cars. We were given this planet by God and we should take care of it. We should do so by, re by reducing travel and air pollution. Speaker number three with topic number three. During the pandemic, people noticed that our natural environment became cleaner. What can this teach us about our care for the natural world? Reverend Fathers, Honorable Judges, Fellow Parishioners, and Speakers, good morning. 2020 was a weird year for everyone and there's a lot of change going on. Along with many others, I was home most of the time and I was outside a lot as well. People say that the health of the environment was getting better and maybe it was because of the lockdown and people weren't going as many places so there wasn't as much pollution or maybe it was that people started to notice more because they weren't outside as more. I mean they were outside more. There are many reasons that the environment's health could have gotten cleaner during the pandemic. People all over the world started to realize that the air felt cleaner and the water looked bluer. That wasn't just because people paid more attention, it was because the air and water actually got cleaner. NASA researchers found that since February, pandemic restrictions have reduced global nitrogen con dioxide concentrations by nearly 20%. NASA used computer-based models to see how the pandemic actually affected the environment. Pollution levels in the atmosphere have dropped dramatically since the shutdown started. They could continue to drop if we learn to be more conser conservative when it comes to our environment. During the lockdown, I was home all the time as I'm sure most of you were too. I spent most of my time outside because I needed a change of scenery and I really started to notice all the different parts of nature that I had in my backyard. When I noticed these things, it really made me appreciate them more because it was like I had my own personal getaway. I know that a lot of people needed a new hobby so they would go for hikes or bike rides in nature, and they would notice that there wasn't as much trash in the roads and there were more good weather days than bad. All of this was because we weren't causing as much pollution. At the time, I had many things canceled because of COVID-19, and I thought that it would be the worst thing in the world, but maybe it wasn't. I would have be sitting in my backyard and realize how much I loved being outside and how much cleaner it seemed to me because of being home and uh, the less traveling. 
I think that we should learn to not cause as much pollution, not just during the pandemic, but all the time. If we manage to keep going the way we are, pollution might be a minor problem in 10 years. God has been a part of my life since I was a baby, but ever since I had more time to think or be alone during the lockdown, he became a bigger part of my life. The lockdown gave me a chance to become closer to my family and friends, but it also allowed me to become closer to God. I really started to appreciate everything that I had, and I was thanking God more than ever for my health, my family, self, and for a place to be during this time. I realized that there was always a reason for that everything happened, whether it was a bad grade on a test or a worldwide pandemic. There was always a reason. I started to realize how lucky I was and how I should be thankful for that and not take it for granted. As Greek Orthodox Christians, we believe that we should not harm the environment. Ecumenical Patriarch Barth Bartholomew calls harm harming the environment a sin in 1997. The day of protection for the natural environment is September 1st. We should take better care of the environment because the Savior loved the world so much that he became part of it, so it's our job to protect it. God created the world for us so we would have we could live in a healthy place and we should take care of it. The health of our environment is dependent on us. So let's all do our part and keep the earth clean. In conclusion, we should care more about our home, the earth, not just because we live here, but because it was a gift we were given and gifts should be treasured and taken care of, not taken for granted. Every part of the world and every part of us and every one of us is a gift, so we should take care of the earth so that we can take care of ourselves. Thank you. This time we're going to take about 15, 20 minutes and do some deliberations with the judges and then we can reconvene back in here to go over the results. Thank you. Take a few minutes and go out into the corridor, atrium area, just um, just to relax while you're deliberating. Feel free to take a break.
Okay, again, thank you all for coming and thank you to the students for participating. Um, we just have a little something that I wanted to give to all of you guys. We have three students. We're going to send one student on to the district level, which will be via Zoom on April 10th, so we can provide more information. Um, but that is going to be Madeline. And then Alexios is going to be the alternate, and Matthew, your honorable mention. So thank you guys very much. We're all very proud of you. It takes a lot of courage to get up here and um, deliver your speeches, so um, we appreciate you guys, and you know, great job today. with a closing prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had today. Help us to continue to learn and present ourselves in front of you, to take chances and encourage us to continue to grow in our faith. Be with the presenters, the teachers, their parents, and all of this community, and help us grow closer to you during this time of Holy Lent and continue to learn your wisdom and commandments. For yours, the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. God bless you guys. Congratulations to all three of you. It takes a lot of courage to do what you did, so God bless you. <laughs>